Hello, my name is Javid Elben, and I'm now standing uh, at the Microsoft campus in Redmond outside of Seattle. I am here to talk about something called Workload Identity Federation and this is my contribution in something called 90 days of DevOps so you can look at the video where I demo that solution. Um, stay tuned. So what is Workload Identity Federation? It's a way that you can access Microsoft protected resources from third-party services like GitHub, you can use Azure DevOps, and you don't have to manage secrets. The way that it works is that you create an app registration or you do uh, use a um, user-assigned man managed identity, and then you set up a connection via OpenID Connect to let those uh, resources uh, be accessed by, for example, a pipeline in Azure DevOps. So first of all, we will look into what an uh, workload identity federation setup is, and that will be done in this upcoming demo. So let's first start by looking at uh, where we can set up the workload identity federation. So there are two options. We can use app registrations and we can use a user assigned managed identity. So for example, if I go in my enter tenant and I'll create a new app registration like this. And I can call it, for example, um, using a prefix for workload identity. I will call it uh, something called a service connection, uh, Azure DevOps, and demo. So, oh, and um, with that, I will just click register, nothing more. And now I have an app registration. I can go to certificates and secrets. And usually when you will uh, use an app registration like this to talk with uh, an Enter ID protected resource, you might go and create a client secret or certificate or something to be able to do the authentication. But now we are looking at federated credentials. And this is the uh, workload identity federation configuration uh, setting. So I can click add credential and then I need to select the scenario. For example, I can select GitHub Actions. Uh, this is also very useful if you are using GitHub. I can use uh, customer managed keys, Kubernetes, or I can select other issuer. And if I select other issuer, I have to manually fill in the values. Uh, and this is the case if I'm using Azure DevOps, um, which we will come back to a little later. So this is uh, things I need to fill out. And there's also good documentation on Microsoft Learn to set this up. So instead, let's um, look at another scenario. If I instead go to the Azure portal, I can so search for managed identities. And I use managed identities for several scenarios. And if I, for example, go and select one of them, uh, one of the demo ones, for example, this is just for showing uh, how it works, I can go and select federated credentials. So this is a user assigned managed identity and I can click Add Credential. And also here, I can see that I have uh, GitHub Actions, Kubernetes, and also an other uh, scenario. So in both, uh, either it's an app registration or if it's a um, user assigned managed identity, I have the option to set up a federated credential. So how does a federated credential look? Well, I already have uh, uh, a service connection set up in my uh, Azure DevOps. I will show you a little later how you set it up. But if I go and look at this service connection in a DevOps project, I can go and select Manage Service Principle. And it, it, uh, this will bring me to the um, Enter portal. And um, the, the corresponding application um, application registration that uh, that uh, 
is connected to that exact service connection. So if I go to certificates and secrets, you can see that I have no certi certificates or client secrets, and that has been the usual configuration if you are doing uh, service connections against Azure Resource Manager from Azure DevOps. You usually would have uh, kind of a rolling client secret here. But now there is no cl client secret, but there is a federated credential. And if I look into that, I will see that that credential is uh, set up as an other issuer. It uh, has an issuer that will reflect my uh, Azure DevOps environment. And there is a specific subject identifier. And that subject identifier is pointing to my uh, DevOps organization, uh, which in this demo scenario is uh, the organization is called the GoToGuy. And uh, I have a project which I'm calling Elven MS Graph PowerShell Automation. I will get back to that later. And this is the name of the service connection. So, so this specific subject identifies that the service connection is trying to authenticate with, uh, with Enter ID. There is also some, uh, some values here that cannot be changed after the first, uh, uh, it has been first created. Um, so there's a name uh, represented by a GUID and there is also audience, which always should be API, double forward slash Azure AD token exchange. So I guess that uh, hasn't been changed to enter ID yet, but and there's a comment here as well. So this is how a federated credential looks. And if I in, Devo if I in DevOps want to uh, use that, um, that service connection, I can, uh, for example, in a pipeline, I can now authenticate with Entra. Of course, I need permissions to what I want to do, but uh, that will come a little later. So that uh, brings um, the first demo to a stop and let's look more into service connections. So now that we know what the uh, workload identity federation is, let's go further and look how we can use it in, for example, Azure DevOps. So in Azure DevOps, we need to set up a service connection and that service connection has to be of type Azure Resource Manager. So previously you had to specify a client secret or a certificate or something. Now we can use a federated identity and we will do that in uh, a service connection in DevOps. So that's the next demo. So now we are going to see how to create a service connection that uses a workload identity federation. Um, here uh, I'm in my Azure DevOps environment. Uh, I have an organization called the GoToGuy. And for example, I can go down to a project like uh, this one. Um, it could be any project. Uh, if I go to project settings, I can go and find the service connections. And here I have the service connection set up for my specific uh, environment. Um, so I will click new service connection, and then I will select Azure Resource Manager because the connection uh, that I will set up that has to use uh, Workload Identity Federation, it's based on Azure Resource Manager. So I have two options for Workload Identity Federation, the automatic one, which, it's, uh, which is recommended, and the Workload Identity Federation manual. To be able to use the automatic um, federation, you also need to have the permissions to create an app registration in your tenant. And not uh, all people that are responsible for DevOps projects have that uh, possibility or that role. So in some cases, you need to work with your Enter admin and set up a workload identity federation manual. So first of all, we can look into the settings for manual. Um, and then I will def define a name. For example, uh, I can use the same name as the previous one I had, and let's call it a demo. I will have a description um, for the service connection. Oops. There we are. And 
I can click next. So the basics are the following. So now I'm presented with the issuer. So this is something that uh, is generated for me and I can copy that and give that to the Entra ID admin. I can also take the subject identifier, also submit that to the Entra ID admin. And I can select the environment which this will uh, apply to. Usually that will be Azure Cloud if you're not in some of the government um, special clouds. Um, and then I can select a scope level. Uh, for example, this applies to the, an, an entire subscription. And I can specify uh, either a man management group or a mach machine learning workspace as well. But in this case, for example, subscription. And then I need to have the subscription ID. I need to specify uh, a, a subscription name and then um, specify also a service principal ID. And that service principal ID is the same ID that the, the app registration uh, which your enter ad, uh, ID admin has set up for you uh, represent and also with the tenant ID. So this is manual setup. Uh, in this case, we will just select uh, now for this demo and um, uh, automatic setup. And in this case, I will also here just add a demo for this one. Um, and I will select subscription and it's loading the subscriptions I have access to. Yeah, so I will use my Microsoft Azure sponsorship uh, subscription, which I have access to. I can also select, for example, um, one of my existing um, uh, resource groups, if I want to. Um, in this case, I will only have this on subscription level, so, so I will not do that. And then I can click um, subscription and save. So you can um, let the service connection be uh, scoped down to a resource group, but I will have it on the, sponsor, uh, on, on the complete subscription level. So while that uh, works, um, and that, then it's finished. I will no, now be able to go into that. I can click Manage Service Principle, or I can go to the Entra ID admin portal, and I will see that I will have a new app registration here, which now reflects the new demo I have set up. And if I go to Authentic uh, Certificates and Secrets, and federated credentials, you can now see that the federation is uh, indeed set up. So that's uh, that's that. Um, and to summarize, when we create a service connection, we always use Azure Resource Manager and then we select either a manual setup or an automatic setup. And if you want to use a user assigned managed identity, you will have to do a manual setup and then you have to uh, use that uh, values to set it up on that user assigned managed identity. Depending on if you need to talk with the Azure admin or something uh, or, or somebody else responsible for that user assigned managed identity, you might, might need to cooperate to be able to set this up. So that uh, concludes the actual setup. And uh, in the next demo after this, we will look at how we can tie it all together and uh, in fact, use it in a pipeline. So with the service connections in place, using a workload identity federation, I can now connect to Microsoft protected and Entra protected APIs. That could be like Azure Resource Manager API, it could be Microsoft Graph API, it could be Key Vault API, it could be your own custom API, as long as they are integrated with uh, Entra ID and uses uh, OpenID Connect. So let's look onto, onto a scenario where we are using Workload Identity Federation in a service connection in a pipeline connecting to Microsoft Graph. So, 
In this last part, we will tie it all together. I have now set up a service connection that uses Workload Identity Federation. Uh, I recently created a new demo one, uh, which show, uh, showed you the steps how to set it up. But in this case, I will uh, uh, concentrate on the existing one. And if I go to pipelines, I have also set up a pipeline already that I'm using for demonstrating how I can uh, authenticate to Microsoft Graph and do some PowerShell Graph commands. So in this pipeline, if I go into that uh, detail, I can see that if I go and click Edit, there we are. And if I hide this taskbar on the right there, let's go into the detail of the steps in that um, pipeline. So I'm not just uh, I'm not triggering uh, this pipeline on any uh, action. This is just for demo purposes, but uh, often you will have a trigger of some kind that will let you uh, run the automation you want in the pipeline. I'm also using a Windows uh, uh, image for my pipeline, but you can also use, an, uh, for example, a Linux Ubuntu if, if that's uh, something you prepare. So let's go into the steps. So first of all, I'm using the task called Azure CLI2, uh, and I will do some commands here to getting the graph token for the workload federated credential. Uh, first of all, I specify my service connection. So this is the actual service connection defined, which obviously are using Workload Identity Federation. I'm running this on a PowerShell Core um, script uh, inline, and these are the important commands. So the first command I run is getting the access token. And if you're using Azure CLI, you can specify the command uh, asset account get access token, and then also specify the resource type. And the resource type in my case is MS Graph because I want an access token for that. But uh, the resource type can also be, for example, the Azure Resource Manager REST API, it can be the Key Vault REST API or anyone, any API you want to specify. In this case, um, I will go for Graph, and then I will take that access token from um, from the response uh, so there are several properties that will return with the token property but i will only be interested in access token and then i'm doing some um, some special command here because i'm setting a set variable uh, which uh, i'm calling secret token and i will specify that uh, this variable is a secret and in this case, I'm using the access token from here, which was in clear text. But by using this command, I will convert that uh, clear text variable, which contains the access token, to an actual uh, secure variable. And this is important for the next step. And the next step is uh, where I connect to Graph PowerShell with that token. So I'm, again, I'm running an inline script. And in this case, I'm converting that secure variable. You remember from the last step uh, here, I converted to a, a variable of type secret. And I will co convert that uh, for PowerShell to a secure string. So I will just call that secure token, convert to secure string, and I will get the secret token, which uh, represents this variable here. and um, and I will uh, submit that as plain text uh, because uh, the pipeline ha has access to the secret as plain text, but I need to convert it to a secure string. And then, um, and this is dependent on your scenario. In my case, uh, first of all, you always would need this um, module to be installed, install module Microsoft Graph Authentication. Uh, you can also install additional modules for Microsoft Graph, for example, users, uh, because I, in my case, I want to demonstrate how I can get a user. So 
so the authentication part is important for this one because I'm running connect MG graph and now I can just specify access token, which is the secure token. So that's pretty easy. I connect to graph by a secure token, which I received via the workload identity federation. And now I can go in and get, for example, user info. And this is dependent on uh, me installing the users module. Uh, if you want to do groups, things, or other things in Microsoft Graph, you have to set up those modules as well. So in this case, I'm just getting a test user in my test environment uh, for myself, uh, just to make it, uh, um, make it a useful demo. So if I go in and click uh, run pipeline, it will start that connection. There we are. So it will take a little while, but I can go in and look at the steps as, as it goes. Um, meanwhile, while it runs, we can look at one of the previous histories of that pipeline. So if I go in here, and look at the uh, one I started just before the demo that was successful. And first of all, um, after uh, initializing the job and checking out the configuration of the pipeline, I can go and look at the first step, which was getting the graph token. Uh, it runs Azure CLI, it checks the version and so on. And I can see uh, that um, I indeed um, was connected to the Workload Identity Federation with my tenant ID and the ID of the app registration and, uh, and the subscription that that service connection is connected to. Uh, so that's the first point. Uh, I don't uh, see an output here on the actual access token because I've saved it as a uh, secure token. Uh, and then I can connect to the graph PowerShell with that token. So this is the next step. Um, so you can see here that I uh, have a connection that is successful because it says to me, uh, welcome to Microsoft Graph. Uh, so this is the first step. And the second step is where I use the get MG user, and that shows me that I, in fact, get a user with that name. And you might ask, how could that service connection be able to list users? And that's a good question, because as long as I have set up, and this is the Azure side again, as long as I have set up an app registration, I can start giving that app registration permissions. So in uh, my case, um, and this is the demo one, I haven't added any permissions to that, so you can see it's empty. So if I will, if I will change to the demo uh, service connection and try to get users, it wouldn't show me any users. But for the existing one, and this is the one, API permissions, you can see that that App registration has been giving the permission because I clicked add permission user read all. So, and also service connections can be used for giving permissions to uh, like Azure resources. Uh, you can use the RBAC module in Azure and so on. So, basically, any kind of API you want to automate against, you have to give the service connection in this case in Enter ID. The permissions to those APIs. I hope uh, this was uh, useful and uh, give you some inspiration. Um, if you want to look more into the detail how this is set up, I have published a blog post. This will be uh, um, contributed together with my video here on day 77 of 90 days of DevOps. In that markdown file there, there's links where you can look into more detail on the setup. So thank you for following this video. I hope you get to explore some exciting scenarios using Workload Identity Federation. And good luck and 
Thanks for watching.